Okay, so a little um, little update on cable management for the MPCNC. Uh, sad story about this, I'll tell it later. Basically, what we're looking at is um, a pair of mounting brackets. One that mounts on a motor on one of the axes. This mounts onto the center um, assembly, the, um, the Z-axis housing, and uh, it bolts onto one corner of it. So the, well, um, you'll see out in the garage. But um, so anyways, got this that bolts on, takes a, a tape under here and takes a tape in there. So basically like that. And um, so anyways, that's one side. The other side, I these brackets were um, something I got off of Thingiverse, but they were obviously for a smaller and less um, curved piece of tape measure. This is pretty radically curved. Didn't fit with that profile, so just designed and printed up some brackets that will actually fit the tape measure. And that goes on the outside axes. But then these guys mount onto the corner poles, and so you've got something like this happening on one of the corners. So you need two of these, um, one for the Y, uh, for the X axis, one for the Y axis that carries also the Z axis components over to the back of the, the machine. This part I designed with too little spacing between here and here. So I designed a new part that had proper spacing between here and here. But guess what? I designed it backwards, mirrored from what it should have been. So um, I had to re, uh, reprint this, uh, redesign it and, and print it up in the proper orientation. Um, I'd set up a nice little print job of 16 hours to run overnight and then while I was at work and it, because I was doing this late at night and I wasn't paying enough attention, I made that silly mistake. So yeah, now that's what's going on on the printer is I'm printing the correctly um, designed part for the center, center mount. So that's an update on all of that shenanigans. Okay, so I've got um, the Marlin firmware customized by um, V1 Engineering um, for the mostly printed CNC built and built and installed on the uh, ramps board that I got. And yeah, there we go. Looks like it boots up. Very nice. So, wiring up uh, stepper motors in series. So, sometimes you will get lucky and your stepper motor will be nicely labeled with um, a pinout on which the various windings are. Or, sometimes you will get a relatively undecipherable pinout diagram. So we have a six pin connector and four pins are labeled and A minus, A plus, B minus, B plus, but it, I can't really decipher which pin goes where. So if you can't find a pinout, one of the things that you can do now, if there are six pins, chances are they, um, they're going to be wired up like follows. Bipolar stepper motors have two sets of windings, one for each phase. And the diagram usually looks like this, something like this. So you've got your, your motor in the center, you've got 
phase A and phase B. If you've got six, I didn't draw the right number of pumps here. If you've got six connectors, that means you've got a center tap on each winding. So this is phase A, let's say, and this is phase B. And if you don't have six pins, if you only have four pins, which sometimes happens, then you will have no center tap. So how do you figure out what the pinout is on your motor? Well, one way is to measure resistance across the various pairs of pins. And if you get um, no resistance, that means you're all measuring different phases. And then if you do have resistance, then you're measuring one or one of these coils. And it's possible to distinguish which coil is which by making a little chart. Okay, so for this stepper motor, I did um, the, the chart, this chart. And it looks like pin five, I'm, I made the label like that. So that's the connector there. So pin five is connected to nothing. Pin two is connected to pin four and pin one. There's this tiny amount of resistance or resistance that I measured here, and that's probably just lead resistance, um, 0.18 ohms. That's the uh, multimeter leads um, and whatever connection is internal between pin one and two, because between pins two and four and between pins two and one, there's a tiny difference in in um, resistance, and that's probably the internal resistance of the of the connection on the inside. So what it looks like is we've got a pinout like this. Pins two and four are connected to one phase of the motor, and pins three and six are connected to another phase of the motor. And pin one, for some odd reason, is connected to um, here. So you could use pins one and four and three and six, and that would make it symmetrical. One and four and three and six. So that is how I wired up, figured out the pinouts on my motors. Now let's um, figure out how we uh, have to hook these up so that when we um, have a, two of them connected to a single driver, they're both rotating in the appropriate direction. So, in order to figure that out, you need to um, know a little bit about how stepper motors actually work. Okay, so stepper motors work a bit like this. Now, usually we draw the coils like that, but I want to draw the coils like this just because it, it makes more sense in terms of um, how the, actu the motor actually works. So, when you have a coil around a... Um, Actually, when you have any kind of a coil, but if you put it around a ferro ferrous rod, it will generate the, um, and you have current flowing in to the coil, it will generate a magnetic field around the coil with a north and south pole on opposite ends of that bar. So you can swap the north and south poles by changing the direction that the current flows inside of this magnet. So if the current's flowing one way, it's going to be a a south north and if the current is flowing the other way it's going to be a nor uh, south north and that is ex exactly the principle that you exploit in order to make a stepper motor so you have a stator or a rotor that has alternating magnetic poles um, around the outside of your of your um, rotor and then you want to alternately turn this into a north or south pole so that if this is a north pole, it's going to repel here and it's going to attract these. So it's going to want to flip one way or the other. But notice that over here, we've got it in between two of poles so we can induce the rotation. So if we make this a south pole, this is going to have a force pushing that away and attracting here. So it tends to rotate it and it'll lock it into here. And as soon as this gets a little ways away, this north-south attraction will um, will be dominant over this north-south attraction, so it will lock in to this next step. And you just keep doing that, except now you've got this oriented, so this is a south pole, so then you change the orientation of these two poles by flipping them around, 
and you can spin the motor. So you change the orientation of these north and south poles. So how do you do that? By changing the direction of the current that is flowing through this. So say we have, um, let's represent our zero, um, our zero potential here. And if current is flowing in the positive direction, we'll have some positive um, value up here. And if current is flowing in the opposite direction, we'll have a value here. So what we're feeding into our um, input here is basically a square wave that alternates between um, current flowing one way and current flowing the other way. And similarly, we will feed into here a square wave with this as being our zero level. And the only difference between these two is that they're half or 90 degrees apart in phase if we have two poles. So for example, if we line these two signals up, you will, and I'm just gonna write them condensed here so it saves me some space. So if that is the signal going into pole A, and then this will be the signal that goes into B, oriented half a phase apart, or um, 90 degrees apart, a quarter phase apart. So when this is going positive, this is already positive, but then when this goes negative, it's positive here still. So you just alternate them back and forth and the motor will spin. So depending on how long they are in those um, uh, relative, er, how long they're in that direction will determine how fast you're cycling between the various steps. So you increase the period of these waves in unison, and what that will do is it lowers the speed of your motor. If you increase the if you increase the frequency, that's faster the motor is going to be spinning and you can change the direction of the motor spin by changing the relative orientation between your two phases. So if I want to spin it in the other direction, so say I have A here, if I want to spin it in the other direction, then I will lead my other phase or lag my other phase, depending on which way you look at it. So instead of having phase B lagging phase A, you have phase B leading phase A, and that changes the direction of the motor. So you can adjust the speed by changing the period, and you can adjust the direction by changing the relative phase between the two coils. And so. I thought it'd be fun to do a couple of experiments with the uh, Adafruit Motor Shield and um, take a look at the waveforms on the oscilloscope just to make sure that the um, theory agrees with practice. Okay, so I've hooked up my, my motor with phase A, let's call it, or phase A hooked up to the red and the, and the blue, and phase B as hooked up to the green and the black. Okay. okay, so I've got one channel hooked up to phase A, and I think this is, which channel is that? I think that's channel B. Channel A is hooked up to the other phase, and I have hooked them up so that the, um, the ground is, re is connected to the same relative pin, and that'll become important in a moment because I'll talk, we'll talk, have to talk about how to change the direction of a stepper motor once it's rotating. So now let's just load up a simple sketch that rotates the motor clockwise, and um, we'll take a look at the waveforms. Okay, so there it is, rotating clockwise. Oh, no, I didn't. Okay, so what we can see is we've got a square wave with the noise coming from the, um, from the motor. Um, and a square wave here with the motor noise so on it as well. And you can see that they are uh, 90 degrees out of phase. And that is driving the stepper in the clockwise direction. To change the direction of the stepper, what you, what you could do is 
change the phase that this these two signals have by making them instead of this one lagging by one by 90 making it lead by 90 or moving this one 180 degrees in phase and to do that in software you just change the direction from backwards to forwards and that changes the the phase relationship of those signals and I'll show you what that looks like okay so we make that change in software and it changes the phase of this by 180 degrees so now it leads this by 90 degrees and uh, you get the motor traveling in the opposite direction like so but that's not the only way of changing the direction of the motor you, you could leave the software unaffected and just invert the polarity of one of your your coils because remember that if you do that you're just changing the direction that the current is flowing at any given time and so what that means is you're going to change the orientation of your poles so so what you're doing when you're taking this coil and swapping the wires on this coil is you're changing at what point in the wave you are energizing north and south and it's the same thing as changing the phase of your signal by 180 degrees if you think about it so you can either change it in software or you can change it in hardware and I'll show you what that looks like by just swapping the green and the black leads and we'll take a look at the scope again okay now the green is connected to the first connector and the black is connected to the the second connector on the motor shield so I've just flipped those around I've kept my probes on the same leads so that we'll see what the um, what the waveform looks like and we'll see that it's shifted 180 degrees backwards in phase compared to the last time we looked and we'll when we power this up we'll see that the motor is now moving in the other direction so let's uh, apply power and there you go motor is turning clockwise again and now let's take a look at the um, the view on the ex on the oscilloscope and so now we're back to the same thing where we've got our one coil trailing the other coil by 90 degrees so remember the last time we had this guy leading by 90 degrees and now it's trailing by 90 degrees so that's the equivalent of 180 degree shift in phase so yeah you can do you can change motor direction either by um, swapping uh, to making changes in software to the driver that's um, driving your motor um, changing the phase of relationship between the two different um, coils that it's driving or you can just do it physically by just inverting your cabling so that you've got one channel one um, one coil of the motor now we're wired up backwards now that will also become important when we try and wire up a pair of stepper motors in series okay so on our MP and CNC we've got two motors for each of the X and Y axes so on the X axis there's going to be a motor here there's going to be a belt that comes over top of it and so if it's rotating clockwise it'll tend to drive the X axis in this direction but if we just have the same rotation and we flip the motor around it will try and drive the X axis in the other direction so we'll be racking our um, our x-axis that is not at all what we want we want these two motors to be op rotating in opposite directions but in phase uh, opposite directions but in phase exactly so what we need to do is we need to have one of these motors wired up with so that it goes into the opposite direction of the other motor okay so our driver chip is going to be outputting um, four signals well two pairs of, of, of we're hooking up two pairs of pins to our motor driver one is driving channel A and one is driving channel B so pins one two three four so that's let's call that channel A1 channel A uh, sorry A and A bar and we're gonna call that B and B bar for whatever reason now 
we don't have the opportunity to, if we're going to be wiring these in series, we don't have the opportunity of changing the output on these in software. So we have to use hardware to do the um, changing of direction of the motors. So that means we have to have one coil wired backwards the, to the corresponding coil on the other end. So to begin with, to wire, motor, to wire things in series, it's pretty simple. Wiring, it goes into one, and then it goes into the other, and then it comes out. So that is series. So that is coil A. So A goes in there, A bar gets connected to there. Now, let's take a look at coil B. If B goes in there, then we want it to go in the other side and then come out. So B bar comes out this way because instead of the um, them come going in in this direction, they're going to be going in the reverse direction. So this is the wiring that we want to try and effect. So there's our two motors. We want A and B and A bar and B bar to be connected up like that. So that means we just have to build a wiring harness that reverses one of the poles on one of the motors, but keeps the polarity on the other pole the same between the two motors. And so that's your wiring diagram. Okay, so getting those on took much longer than I uh, really should have, but I uh, learned a couple of things. This die is not correct for DuPont connectors. It leaves part of part of the crimp uncrimped. That one is crimped properly on the center and around the uh, the insulation, but um, you can see that part of the um, part of the crimp is left unfolded, so it's the wrong die size. The cable looks close enough. I mean, it's it's gripping the insulation quite nicely, but the um, the inner part of the die that cr crimps the uh, the cable is the wrong size, so I have to get a different die. I was able to do the bang on, but it's just a pain on the butt. So anyways, yeah. Um, now we've got a power supply, a switch, we've got some minor strain relief going on there, just so we don't pull the power out while it's in energized. And we've got cables coming into the back, so I just have to plug everything together, button it up, and get a computer out here, and we can take it for a test spin. Okay, let's test some motors. So we've got x-axis, roughly. So I'm going to have to get a new stepper for the top, for the, uh, for the z-axis, because this one was not beefy enough. I just had it lying around. Um, I thought if I could use it, great. If not, well, I mean, it seems to be okay for... The, uh, one of these horizontal axes, but um, for now, at least for drawing, I can do some tests. And I've got the, uh, the drawing holder, pen holder on there, and uh, yeah, so let's screw this, uh, this um, spoil board down and uh, see what we get. Quick update on the wiring harness. I had to add power out from the 12 volt to power the Arduino because it wasn't um, producing the power on the, there wasn't enough power through the onboard voltage regulator to power the LCD panel as well. So that when you uh, powered it up, I mean it powered up fine, um, but it uh, wasn't powering the LCD, but now powers the LCD and boots up. So yeah, let's slip that back into its case. Okay, work holding with masking tape is probably the only time I'll ever do that. Uh, so let's see what we get. Oh my goodness, this is so slow. 
I can't believe I, I, I must have set the units incorrectly somewhere. So I have a problem with tram, um, which makes perfect sense because I, I haven't trammed the, um, the machine at all. I just wanted to put a pen in there and see what it would draw. And um, it's looking not too, too bad in terms of precision. And also, I didn't give it enough um, Z-lift um, in the, uh, the G-code. Because, well, as you can see, it's, uh, it's dragging its pen when it is moving to the next arc that it's going to draw. So, yeah. I have to say that it seems to be doing the things that it's intended to do. I just have to do some tweaks to the machine. So, yeah. So far, so good. I think we can call it a, uh, a pr progress weekend. Okay, well, let's see what happens if we do some dummy moves with the NPCNC. So this is the um, the pocket. Well, that would have a spindle spinning, and that would outline the pocket, presumably. Plunging, and then it goes around. Does the outline of the pocket. Seems reasonable. Picks up, moves over, drops down. And now it's doing the zigzag to hog out the remainder. You know, I have to see if I can get a, uh, a uh, collet for this thing because I only have a chuck. And I wonder if I can get a collet for it. But if not, I'll just pick myself up a, a millet because it looks like um, it looks like I should be able to cut with this thing. Seems uh, seems not too unreasonable. I have to figure out things like zeroing, but yeah, it's uh, looking like a possibility. No, I do have a call it for it. Excellent. So this is my idea for work holding to begin with. I'm just going to clamp it to the table. It's only styrofoam. Hopefully that uh, will be sufficient to keep it from moving around. I'm going to do my test cut. Okay, let's try it with some uh, MDF. 